All right, so if you follow what I do, you know that I study tons of pro swings, not only from now, but throughout history. And one thing that I found in common with the right elbow, I'll get to a little bit later in this video, that I found the right elbow at impact is in a much different position than what most all recreational golfers' right elbow is in. And that's part of what's gonna help you to get rid of this casting motion, to get more lag, to really compress that golf ball at impact, and really just be much more solid and consistent. How do we get into that position? The right elbow is gonna be a huge key. Before we get to that, let's get to the reason why that is. And I've set up a little uh, training system here. You can do the same thing at home, which is great. So this is just a, a piece of wood that I had laying around. It's, a, it's an old shelf. And if we had this straight up and down, obviously that'd be 90 degrees. We're gonna lean this forward to mimic the same amount of shaft lean that you're gonna have with your irons at impact. So here I have a pitching wedge and you'll see if I come into contact, my shaft as I hit this golf ball should be matching up with the angle of this piece of wood. That's about 15 degrees leaning forward. Now another great little benefit of this is if you have a piece of wood like this or a piece of cardboard or whatever you have laying around, I can also check the face angle. If this angle is matching the angle to my target or perpendicular to that, as I come to contact, I can look at the leaning edge of my club and see if it's perfectly square with that piece of wood. And now I know that's the position that I should be in. Now, you can get really specific with this if you want to, but you don't have to get that crazy. This is just going to get you the general idea. Now, pro players are taking about 30% of the loft off their club at impact. What basically that means, if you have a three iron that has 21 degrees, 30% of that is seven degrees, you're going to be leaning that down to 14 degrees of loft and impact. If you have a pitching wedge like this, which is let's say 45 degrees to make the, the math pretty simple, and most pitching wedges these days are right around there, 30% of that is 15 degrees, meaning that this piece of wood would be leaning forward 15 degrees, and I would now have 30 degrees of loft and impact. So if this club normally has 45 degrees of loft, that's with the shaft straight up and down. Now when I lean that forward to match this 15 degree piece of wood with a square face, now the club head only has 30 degrees of loft on it. So this is gonna teach you exactly what it should feel like to hit a great iron shot. Set this up about 15 degrees leaning forward, take out your pitching wedge right now, and let's start making some swings with just the right arm only. Now what you're gonna notice happens right away is you're gonna have to open your hips and get this right knee starting to kick forward, maybe even get the right heel to lift up slightly off the ground in order to get that shaft to feel comfortable or this club to feel comfortable in your body, like you could do this as you're moving and get that much shaft lean. If my right knee is back, my heel is down, my weight is maybe too much on my right side, I'm not getting that shift to the left, it's gonna feel almost impossible to get this across my body that much, I can't even reach over there. So my body has to open up to allow me to get the amount of shaft lean that I really need. Now if we take it up the chain, my hips are also gonna open. Pro players at impact, their hips are 30 to 45 degrees open, so if this is straight toward the, the ball, we're gonna go 30 to 45 degrees this way. I'm even gonna feel like my right shoulder starts to go a little farther forward. And a cool trick to this is, if you don't wanna be over the top, if I take my right shoulder and put it forward this way, and this is my shoulders swinging level with the ground, that'll really open my shoulders up. So I'm gonna do that. And you'll notice how my shoulders are now really open. If I let my shoulders move in more this angle, like a Ferris wheel or up and down, you can easily just take a club, put it across your shoulders. I feel like that right shoulder goes forward, but the left shoulder goes up. You'll notice how now my shoulders really aren't that much open. So yes, they're slightly open. Pros on average, their rib cage is about 15 degrees open at impact, but it's not 45 like this. I'm not turning level with the ground. I'm at that tilt. So a good little cheat for that, put the club across your shoulders. The, club, the butt end of the club sticking out of your right shoulder should be working down toward the golf ball and not working level with the ground if you're doing this correctly. So you'll see when I do this, I have the, the board in my middle of my stance where the ball position would be. I'm letting the right knee and the right heel kick forward. My hips open up. My right shoulder comes forward slightly. And if I do this correctly, when I add my left arm to it, my left arm almost feels like it's coming across my body. It should feel nice and connected here, like you have some control over this. And now I'm in this great impact position, matching that iron to this board. Now, when you look at it from down the line, it, it looks as though my shoulders are square now because this left arm reaching across. That's how you know you're doing it right. And that's why so many times, you know, people get confused. They think, well, how am I gonna 
open up my body and then still have my shoulders square. This all gets very confusing. Well, in reality, your whole body is opening up. You're on this angle as you're doing it, but your whole body is opening up when you do it with your right arm. My body looks very open in this position, but when I add my left arm to it, that's what gives it the look that you see with all those pros where their shoulders are square or appear to be square, even though the rest of the body is opening up. Now, if you're like most people, as soon as you do this and you get this feeling, you're gonna see your club face do this. It's gonna open wide open. What I mean by that is here, straight up and down the club face, the leading edge is square. And as you get into this opening up position, that face is gonna be wide open like that. So if I did that here again, here's my club straight up and down. Most people as they get into this position will have their face like that. You'll notice how the leading edge is kind of off this board. And I would have to close that until this is a really cool part. The bottom groove of my club should now be square with this board if I have square contact. Now I like to do this drill being a right-handed person. You feel things a lot better using your right hand. So what I like to do for this is I like to take a, a dowel, a stick, an old club that you don't care about beating up, whatever it is, and you can actually hit this board. Now it's gonna be loud, but ideally what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna try to recreate that impact position and I'm gonna hit this stick on the entire board at once. If I'm kind of dragging it through there, that would be leaning it forward too much, kind of spinning my body open, that's not good. The club, it would just hit the top of the, the board right here. If I'm flipping it, which is way more common, then I'm starting to throw it and just the tip of the stick hits it. I'm trying to get used to feeling like, what would I need to do to move my body? What would I need to do to hit this with the entire stick at once? And I can just go ahead and do a couple practice swings. And I felt like right away, again, you can't tell as much on camera, but I felt like, okay, I gave that one a little nudge and purposely tried to hit off the tip. I could feel that just the tip of it hit. This time I'm gonna try to feel like more, like the whole stick is on there, like the, my hand's farther in front and give it another whack. And that time, really loud, I could tell that the entire stick hit it at the same time. So it's a cool little way, although it might be loud, your wife may get kind of mad at you or whoever your neighbors are might get mad at you, but it's a cool way to feel how would I have to move to really deliver that solid strike with the whole right side of my body. Now that's where the pro trick comes in there. What I found is if you're gonna do this, you have to have this elbow pit facing forward like that. So as soon as my elbow pit goes out, Look how that stick wants to go this way. As my elbow pit gets in, and my, the pit of my elbow is facing more toward the camera that way, as that gets in, instead of this throwing motion with the elbow in, it turns like this, and now I can get that shaft lean. So that's a big key. Now when I measured pro players, and I looked at dozens and dozens of pro players, what you'll actually see is, when you put a golf ball down, imagining this is their golf ball, as they come to contact here, their right elbow is in line with this ball or even slightly in front of it. But if you look at recreational golfers, they're throwing and their right elbow is way behind this golf ball when they make contact. So you wanna feel like your elbow is actually leading the way. And if you can get your right elbow in front of this golf ball at contact, you're gonna be a heck of a lot more consistent. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a try with a real club now. All right, so I've got my pitching wedge back out. We're gonna do a few reps on this. Number one, we're gonna practice knee, hip, shoulder, body. This entire club matching up this board. And I'm looking down to make sure my face is square with this board and not open like most people will have it. So I'm just doing right arm only. And I'm waiting until as I pause at impact, it's pretty much matching it up perfectly in my practice swings before I'm ready to move on. Once I can do that, I'm checking to make sure another 10, 15 reps. I'm getting my elbow as far in front of the golf ball as I can, or the, the, the club head as I can at impact, and another 10 or 15 reps. Once you're comfortable with that, let's put both arms on there, and let's try to recreate that same feeling. So 10, 15 reps to where I'm really getting that down. Now once I've done those 10 or 15 reps, I've felt that, now I'm gonna make a normal swing, and I'm just gonna try to recreate that same feeling at impact. All I'm doing differently is swinging a little bit fuller back, same exact feeling at impact, and then finishing my swing. And I've got one tip for you here at the end that's so important to making sure that you make a great swing as you're actually doing this. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl here now. I'm gonna to try to recreate those same exact feelings. First swing of the day, so if I blow it, you'll know this drill is no good. Let's give it a whirl.
There we go, nice and solid. Nice tight little draw, and again, 148 yards with a pitching wedge, not gonna do a whole heck of a lot better than that. So that felt really good. Now one thing I like about this too is I feel very connected with my entire body. So this all feels connected. When this elbow gets forward, this feels nice and tight and connected. Feels like I have a lot of control of the club face. And then from there, remember we're doing the whole right side of our body. Only thing you wanna do to the finish is go ahead and finish all the way around. So I'm gonna take that knee toward the target, my hip, right hip toward the target, my right shoulder all the way toward the target, and then I'm gonna finish balanced over my left leg. If I can do that, then I'm gonna hit a nice solid shot and I'm gonna be able to finish that swing. So it should be just like this, knee, hip, shoulder, everything going more toward the target in the follow through is the only thing I need to do to finish this off. All right, let's go ahead and hit one more. That one felt pretty daggone good. There we go, dead solid on that one. Again, a nice little tight draw, 156 yards. With a pitching wedge, that's about as good as I got. Now, there is one piece here that makes a big difference. You see, when I'm doing this, I actually have to be a little closer to the ground to stay in my posture and get this shaft lean, to get this elbow in front. If I stand up out of my posture, what ends up happening is I have to throw to reach the club and my elbow is behind the ball at impact. So the more that you stand up, the more you throw. And there's actually one really key thing to start your downswing. How I start the first little bit of my downswing, if I don't do that correctly, my club shaft gets a little too steep, and then it's virtually impossible to recover and get to that great impact position that we just talked about. I'm gonna play a preview of a video that's gonna help you perfectly with that. We're gonna talk about how you don't wanna ring the bell at the start of your downswing, or that's gonna screw everything up, and I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. When you pair it up with what we worked on here today, that's gonna to be the very best next step. And if you struggle getting steep, you wanna shallow that club out, this is gonna be absolutely perfect for you. So click the card that pops up on your screen as this preview plays here in a second, or if you don't see the card, don't worry about that. Just go down to the link in the description below. You can click that too and get instant access. Best of luck, and I can't wait to help you to stop ringing that bell and show you the right way to start your downswing. Let's go and get started. Bottom line is that by trying to ring that bell or pull the hands down more from the inside, it gets the club shaft steep, steep and runs your entire downswing. Now, what you end up having to do is to keep from just keeping down on that steep angle and burying the club behind the golf ball, you have to stand up out of your posture and that's really the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't want to be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's going to allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I want to be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 